folks, Dr. Rob Barrington here with some more nutrition advice. I wanted to do a video today on vitamin E. Um, now, I've done videos before on vitamin E, um, but I wanted to cover in particular today the difference between uh, the types of supplement that you can buy that contain vitamin E. Uh, and I didn't want to go into this in too much um, um, breadth because I wanted to focus particularly on the difference between powdered vitamin E and the vitamin E that you can buy in an oil. There are many other um, factors to consider when buying supplements and I have covered some of those before and there is a lot of information on my blog and there is a particular um, uh, article that I wrote on my blog that gives you a primer into the structures of vitamin E and the differences between uh, the eight isomers that make up uh, vitamin E and I'll put a link to that um, that article in the uh, description box below this video because it is quite useful to refer to when I uh, talk about some of the uh, chemical aspects of vitamin E. Um, so you can buy vitamin E in a powdered form and you can buy vitamin E as an oil and when you go into the supplement shop and you look at the t uh, you look at the supplements you can actually see um, some vitamin E uh, come, it comes in capsules as an oil inside a capsule and some vitamin E comes uh, as a powder inside a, a gelatin capsule. Um, now if you buy your if you get your vitamin E in a multivitamin the chances are you will have the powdered form of the vitamin added to the tablet because obviously it's not really um, suitable to add an oil to other powdered vitamins so generally multivitamins will use the powdered form now what's the difference between the two the powdered vitamin E and the oil vitamin E and why would you choose one over the other well to be able to understand the difference first you have to understand some of the chemistry of vitamin E and I'm not going to go into this into great in, in great depth but I want to give you just a quick overview Vitamin E is a group of compounds, it's not a single compound. There are eight isomers that make up vitamin E and all of those isomers share the same biological activity as the uh, parent compound which is alpha tocopherol. Now alpha tocopherol is um, what other um, uh, isomers are judged against because it's the most, in humans, it's the most biologically active form of vitamin E. But there are eight, eight isomers, there's alpha, beta, gamma and delta tocopherol and there's alpha, beta, gamma and delta tocotrienol. The difference between the tocopherols and the tocotrienols, all vitamin E has a chrominal head which is a, a ring structure and then it has a tail which is called a phytyl tail. Um, the difference between the tocotrienols and the tocopherols is that the phytyl tail in the tocotrienols is unsaturated. In other words, it has double bonds in it. Um, structurally, they look very similar if you draw them out. Um, and there is a, a, a moving of um, a methyl groups around the chrominal head in order to be able to create the different isomers. So all of these eight isomers share the same biological activity. They all have the same activity as alpha tocopherol. Um, and uh, uh, they all uh, uh, they they all have varying percentages applied to them based on how uh, biologically they active are, and that's judged against alpha tocopherol. The reason alpha tocopherol is the most biologically active form of vitamin E, and it's um, it, you know it's the most common um, dietary supplement form, is that alpha tocopherol is the form that has the highest affinity for a protein in the liver called the tocopherol transfer protein, and it's the tocopherol transfer protein that takes the vitamin. Vitamin E that we've eaten in our diet that we've digested and absorbed and it transfers it into lipoproteins which are then sent to the tissues so because alpha tocopherol has the highest affinity for that protein more of the alpha tocopherol ends up in the lipoproteins and then more of it therefore ends up in our tissues the other reason that our tissues contain high levels of alpha tocopherol uh, is simply because it's one of the most common isomers in our diet. Uh, there is quite a lot of gamma tocopherol in certain foods. Uh, the tocotrienols are quite rare, but generally, uh, if if a food contains vitamin E, uh, it's most likely to contain the highest uh, the, 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 the isomer it will contain in the highest amount is alpha tocopherol, and this is the reason why um, dietary supplements tend to be alpha tocopherol because it's the most common. Uh, isomer in food and therefore uh, when the supplement companies extract it from the food uh, it's the isomer that is the uh, you know is going to provide the most uh, yield from that food. Um, now 
another thing to say quickly is that vitamin E can come in a natural form and it can come in a synthetic form. If it comes in its natural form, it is designated D-alpha tocopherol or D-beta tocopherol or D-beta tocotrienol. There's always a D in front of um, the, uh, the the Greek um, designation for uh, the, 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 the isomer. Um, if the form is synthetic, um, then the designation is DL. So DL alpha tocopherol is a th synthetic form of alpha tocopherol that hasn't been extracted from food. It's actually been synthesized in a in a in a, in a, a, a laboratory using um, a chemical means. And um, DL alpha tocopherol still has the activity of vitamin E, but it's not as biologically active as the D. Uh, natural D form uh, and I think it's about 66% as active um, and this is because uh, it's an it's it's actually a mixture uh, it's called a rasmic mis mixture of a D and an L form together and only the D form is uh, actually biologically active the L form has no effect in humans and therefore because it's a mixture of the two um, the L form is simply uh, is ignored by the body and therefore all of the L isomers of alpha tocopherol in that uh, artificial synthetic supplement are simply ignored by our cells um, and they're excreted and removed. So that's quite um, that's quite important to understand and that's a, a very brief uh, overview of vitamin E chemistry. But let's get back to this powdered versus um, uh, oil because this is where we really want to, um, you know, what we want to find out. The oil form of vitamin E is um, the form that would be in uh, plants. It's the form that um, you would find if you went out into nature and you looked at seeds. Sunflower seeds, for example, contain high amounts of vitamin E. The form of vitamin E that they would contain would be the tocopherol form, which is an oil form. So it's tocopherol ending the suffix in OL. And that means it's an alcohol form of the vitamin. Um, and that alcohol form uh, is forms like an oil. It's, uh, it, it's why uh, plants produce this form and it would be mixed in with the unsaturated oils that would be in the seeds. And the reason that plants produce uh, vitamin E is to protect the unsaturated oils from uh, uh, oxidation um, because vitamin E is an antioxidant and by mixing the vitamin E in with the, with the unsaturated oils in nuts and seeds they protect those uh, unsaturated oils uh, and vitamin E in its tocopherol form has exactly the same uh, effect in our cells it accumulates in the cell membranes uh, and it protects the oxidation of our cell membranes particularly the fats in our cell membranes our cell membranes are made up of uh, lots of fats and the vitamin E accumulates with those fats and it protects the fats in our cell membranes exactly the same way as it's designed to protect the fats in nuts and seeds by uh, plants. So that's the tocopherol form, it's an oil form and it's got the suffix OL, uh, it's the alcohol form. Now there is, a, there, there is a, something you can do chemically to the alcohol form that actually improves its stability. Um, the alcohol form, the OL tocopherol or tocotrienol, um, is, is quite susceptible to uh, damage from oxygen itself. Um, you can actually increase the stability and the shelf life of vitamin E by reacting uh, at one of the groups, a hydroxyl group, which is an OH group on the chrominol head of the vitamin E. You can react that with an organic compound such as acetate or succinate. Uh, and when you do that, uh, you produce an ester bond um, and you end up with an ester form of the vitamin. So if you reacted tocopherol with um, succinate, you would get tocopheryl succinate. And the OL is then changed to a YL at the end of the um, uh, of, of tocopherol, becomes tocopheryl. Um, and this is the way to detect whether you have the ester form, the reacted form, or the original alcohol form in your supplement. If it's if on the back of your supplement the ingredient is tocopherol, you have the oil form of the vitamin in your supplement. If the designation on the back of your supplement in the ingredients is tocopheryl, and it would be something like tocopheryl succinate or tocopheryl acetate, then you have the powdered form. Now when you eat that, when you consume that supplement that contains the ester form, the powdered form, 
um, you have lipases in your uh, in your gastrointestinal tract and those lipases are designed to break the ester bonds on triglycerides and a triglyceride is simply three fatty acids joined to a glycerol molecule um, those lipases will break down those ester bonds on triglycerides and to allow you to be able to absorb fatty acids and glycerol um, they will also break down the ester bonds on uh, vitamin E uh, between the vitamin E molecule and the organic compounds such as acetate or succinate so you effectively digest um, the um, the vitamin E form uh, when it's in its powdered form and when you break that ester bond with your lipases the vitamin E goes back to being the tocopherol form and therefore when you consume the powdered form ultimately you actually produce the tocopherol you reproduce the tocopherol in your gut which is then absorbed along with other fatty acids and then it goes through the same process as if you had consumed tocopherol in uh, you know in a capsule so once you've consumed the powdered form of vitamin E, <clears throat> it effectively becomes the alcohol form of vitamin E that you would get in a gelatin capsule containing oil. And therefore, there is no real difference between the powdered form and the oil form. The only thing I would say is that um, the powdered form tends to have a higher shelf. It tends to have a longer shelf life and therefore it's more stable. Uh, and therefore, sometimes it's better to actually go for the powdered form over the oil form. Now, it gets more confusing than that because some supplement companies actually, uh, and if I can bring up this um, the short video that I made of a, uh, a, a label of a, a vitamin E uh, pot, you can actually see that this was um, a vitamin E supplement that I had that contained uh, um, vitamin E in an oil. But if you look at the ingredients on the back, you can see tocopheryl acetate. Um, so therefore... This was a vitamin E supplement containing oil, but which actually contained the ester form of vitamin E in the supplement. Uh, and the reason I would suggest that they did that is because they also uh, had mixed tocopherols in the supplement and they were probably in the alcohol form. And therefore they decided to put the whole thing into a gelatin capsule as an oil. Um, so it does it's not always it's not always straight cut it's not always what you would expect but it's just therefore to show you that um when you buy powdered vitamin e uh, if it's the um, as long as it's the d form of the vitamin e it's effectively the same uh, it ultimately it's going to be the same as the oil form uh, the advantage obviously that you may have actually more vitamin E in your supplement because the shelf life and the storage uh, stability of the ester form, the powdered form, is a little bit better. Um, but if the oil form has been stored correctly, it's been kept cool, it's been kept away from um, a light, most vitamin E should come in like a, either opaque capsules or in an opaque bottle. As long as it's been stored away from light and heat, um, it sh that shouldn't really be a problem. Always, when you buy your vitamin E, keep it. If you keep it in, the, if you have it in the oil form, keep it in the fridge to keep it cool and dark, uh, and that will also increase um, the shelf life of the vitamin um, within your supplement. Now, if you look on the back of a supplement and you happen to find that it says that the, vi the supplement contains vitamin E and it simply designates the vitamin E as alpha tocopherol, um, or it could be alpha tocopherol acetate for example if it doesn't designate d in front of the alpha in other words it doesn't actually state that this is the natural form of vitamin e always assume that it's actually the synthetic form um, here we can see um, a supplement that contains um, it just says alpha te which stands for tocopherol um, on the ingredients it says uh, vitamin e there is no evidence from this supplement that they've used the natural form the d alpha tocopherol form which means that they very likely used the synthetic form uh, the dl form so just be aware of that uh, obviously if you use the more expensive and the superior d form of the vitamin be it either d alpha tocopherol or d alpha tocopherol acetate um, you would advertise that on your supplement and you would make it clear that you'd use that because it's a superior form. Those supplement companies that don't tell you which form they've used have nearly always used the cheaper synthetic form. And to be honest, I would never buy that cheaper synthetic form of vitamin E. Um, 
I do suspect that the L part, the L um, uh, part of the mixture, actually interferes with the with the D part, and therefore uh, there would probably be problems with using synthetic vitamin E that have not been discovered. So I would always stick with the D form of the vitamin. So that would be D alpha, D beta, D gamma, or D delta. Um, and whether you get it as the tocopherol form or as the tocopheryl acetate or tocopheryl succinate and remember it can be reacted with really any organic uh, compound but succinate and acetate are the two that you most commonly find in supplements uh, whether it's the alcohol or the ester form doesn't really matter um, just bear in mind that if you want to have mixed tocopherols in a supplement so you want a mixture of all the tocopherols you will generally uh, have to get the oil form and the reason for that is that they only generally make alpha tocopherol uh, in this powdered form it's a, a lot less uh, uh, common to find the other uh, the other isomers of vitamin E and therefore when they put a, a you know a, a, a mixture of vitamin E they tend to extract it straight from the plant uh, and once they've extracted the oil they simply uh, put that in a capsule um, it, those companies that use the powdered form tends to order the powdered form after it's been manufactured so there's a slightly different manufacturing process so mixed tocopherols will generally come as uh, the the alcohol uh, oil form um, if we have a quick look at the the difference there's some I've just done a quick um, bit of a video here on some um, vitamin E um, capsules that have the powdered form in them uh, and what you'd expect to see if you found uh, the uh, the gelatin capsules the soft gels um, and then uh, with the with the actual uh, alcohol oil form in them and you can see obviously the difference um, like I said when you look for your supplements make sure that the vitamin E is contained within um, some kind of opaque or um, um, or, or, or some kind of okay, bo 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 opaque bottle or seal, sealed in some way away from light make sure that where you buy it is nice and cool make sure it's not for example bought from um, a, a windowsill where the sun is shining on it um, it should be kept um, cool, it should be kept dark uh, and if you do buy the oil form make sure um, when you get it home that you store it in the fridge to keep it as, as fresh as possible there's less need to store the powdered form of vitamin E in the fridge because the shelf life because of the ester bond it's much more stable and therefore keep it cool but and away from light but you don't have to put it in the fridge so I hope that was useful um, really the conclusion from this is uh, powdered or um, or oil form there is no real difference what's more important is that you buy the natural form of vitamin E which is the D form and that you buy it from a reputable, reputable manage, uh, manufacturer and you buy it from uh, a company that stored it correctly so that the, uh, the the freshness is there and you've got the maximum amount of vitamin E with the minimum amount of oxidation um, so Please check out the uh, uh, the blog article that I've written if you want some more information on the structures of vitamin E. Um, it might give you some more background information so that when you're you know making your next purchase, you have a bit more knowledge and you can make an informed decision. Uh, and I will see you soon for another video. And in the meantime, um, take care, uh, eat eat well, stay healthy, and protect yourself. <laughs>